Hi, TikTok. I think I kind of need your help again. We're trying to figure out how bad the situation is with Judge Mayer, Mager, whatever her freaking name is. Because ever since I posted the video about Justice for Sheila, I have been getting hit with so many stories um, that are very disturbing regarding this judge. Something needs to be done. I don't have the answers. All I know is that the words I've been getting are this judge 100% is targeting mothers. And I have to be careful what I post that um, could amplify that problem. So we're trying to figure out solutions. If you have solutions or suggestions, reach out. So here's an update on Judge Denise Meager, who was a Worcester Court family court judge and is also a Plymouth Brockton court judge. Ever since the TikToks came out and people started finding out about what we're doing here, more and more people have been reaching out. But check this shit out. You have a guy who's pending criminal charges. Okay, criminal charges for... If he's being charged for assaulting sexually a child, why is he getting visitation? Why is he getting unsupervised visits and no child support? Basically blaming the mother for him abusing the child? Who the hell is this goddamn judge? We need people who can sit in her fucking courtroom. Seriously, people. I, I'm i just, I'm in awe at the people that are coming forward and hearing how lawyers have quit cases because of the open judicial bias in her courtroom against mothers in cases of abuse, calling them liars, despite the evidence, despite criminal charges, despite incarceration. What is going on, Massachusetts? Seriously, we got, I don't know what to do. I, I can't do this by myself. I really can't do this by myself. We really need a team of people to address this issue because this is going to lead to children dying. Okay. It's already harming irreparably, but this is, this is pathetic. We need to do something. So here's a question for you, TikTok. Why is Judge Mehar or Megar, or whatever the fuck her name is, uh, residing on cases that are not hers, where she is not the judge of record on these cases? I want to know who knows the answer to this million dollar question as to why are all these cases that I'm getting, she is not the case judge of record. Why is she hearing cases and she is not the case judge? Why isn't the case judge hearing these cases? Is Judge Mehar being barred from having cases where she's assigned? I'm wondering, who knows the answer to this million dollar question? All right, here we go, TikTok. We have a call to action. Some of you know my story where I was wrongfully incarcerated by a family court judge who denied me access to a lawyer, um, denied me uh, accommodations. We actually have another protective parent um, who had a, a, um, a covering judge or a judge that took over unfamiliar with the case history, uh, documenting, well documenting uh, vexatious litigation, post separation abuse, domestic violence, all that stuff. This judge took over, or whatever, I don't know if it's her one hearing or took over the case. This mother had a medical emergency the day of the hearing. She called the court, she did everything that she was supposed to do appropriately. And the judge punished her because she had a medical emergency 
due to the history of trauma and court-sanctioned abuse that resulted in a medical emergency. And, you know, we're still human. <laughs> and so this judge sanctioned her over $3,000 and six months incarceration. So we have right here, right there, we have a call to action. Um, let me just see. So the, I actually did see the order, by the way. And quite frankly, when I was reading it, there is such like there needs to be an agency. And I'm putting out a call for those who have social media influences. Please help this mother, because if this judge gets away with traumatizing this protective parent when her only desire is to be free from abuse and they're punishing her for that desire, with six months incarceration and the cost of incarceration on the taxpayer is $62,000. That $62,000 would be better spent giving her a lawyer so she could be represented in court. So when she has a medical emergency, she has a lawyer and she has representation. She can't afford representation because of the vexatious litigation. And for those of you who have been in family court with post-separation abuse, you get it. You get it. Um, not only that, but PTSD is a recognized disorder. I'm not saying she has that, but uh, I want to be clear. But trauma and PTSD is a symptom of trauma um, that can manifest physical issues and physical emergencies is a recognized disability under the American Disabilities Act. Therefore, judges are not immune to discipline when they violate the American Disabilities Act when this mother asked for accommodations and was denied, okay? She, the $62,000 they're going to spend on incarcerating this mother would be better spent giving her a lawyer and getting her the medical um, resources that she needs so she can recover from all the abuse. She's entitled to this. I swear, like, this is insane, people. This is like misogyny one-on-one. -on -one. It's like Handmaid's Tale one-on-fucking-one. It is absolutely insane. So here's what we're doing. We are calling a call to action. Here is the date. Call to action. I need, we need mothers, protesters, disruptors to show up at the court with signs, posters, so that way we can make a stink and let this judge know we see what the hell is going on and they can't silence us anymore. And if they try to kick us out, we have a right to see. There is a transparency. We have a right to know what's going on in these hearings. Because here's the other thing I know about Plymouth Court. They are limiting or not allowing court watchers in the courtroom. How do I know? Because it's the same courthouse I had a pleasure of being in. And during, they were using the excuse of the post-pandemic to not allow people in there to watch. So we could actually hold these judges and courts accountable for when they violate human rights, blatant human rights violations. Okay, like this is a big deal, people. It is inhumane what this judge is doing, and it is wrong. And we need people to show up on August 25th so that way this mother can get justice for the first time. Okay, before she ends up. I don't know, but it's taking a toll on her physical body and causing medical issues. That's how bad this has gotten. We are still human. We are not superhuman. And to be punished because we are being, uh, um, we're being infected or whatever the fuck it is. Anyway, you get where I'm going. Please share this. Please share her story. Okay. This needs to be done. Okay. Her name is Sheila Murphy. We need to help her. We need to rally. She needs to know she's not alone, okay? Because I wish I had that 10 years ago when I went through this and the same courthouse incarcerated me because I wrote it in, in, in the book Feisty. Me Too Family Courts. This is worse than anything you, you would ever read in my book. So please support her. Please share this. Let it go far and wide. Let's support her. Just got to say this is true to a point. We must abolish judicial immunity because immunity does not equal accountability. There is no justice without accountability. We must audit the family courts so we can see how bad the system is and the corruption. 
which is what they don't want. But we need transparency because literally, at least in the state of Massachusetts, domestic violence homicides are up 40% in the last two years. The numbers don't lie. We just need a system and legislators that have the guts and the cojones to address the issue and do this job to save lives. Hi, TikTok. So if you've been following my page, you can see how much of the advocacy we're trying to do. We have a lot of things pending with some resistance happening, especially surrounding especially the, the bills concerning coercive control and litigation abuse. We have also seen an increase of 40% uh, homicides uh, in the state of Massachusetts, domestic violence related homicides. The need for healing services and domestic violence coaching um, has also exponentially increased. I need your help. We have a holiday vendor fair coming on Sunday, December 3rd. I'm not asking for you to pay my salary. I'm just asking my expenses to be covered and I need your help so I can help support these women and survivors of abuse and help be a change agent for Massachusetts. This includes helping with court watching. We have data and stats and research we need to collect and we need to collect pronto. Um, I can't disclose details uh, publicly for obvious reasons. We also have 70 pending bills that need advocacy lobbying uh, to help share stories and advocate for survivors with these bills that need to be passed in Massachusetts. We also have ongoing training that I need to go and continue to do, which also takes expenses and money. We also have uh, survivors that I have been coaching and guiding uh, with significant um, time and resources on my end to devote into helping at pro bono free of charge uh, services and I am only one person and for me to be able to help more I need additional resources to continue the work that I've been doing for almost 20 years I need your help so please come please share um, the holiday vendor fair there are gonna be many vendors but the items that I'm personally gonna be selling including original artwork jewelry um, books and calendars and um, crystals and pendulums and Nepalese wear and stuff from the Mayan communities. Um, just trying to think off the top of my head. Oh, uh, elderberry syrup I'm making and herbal teas and uh, concoctions and tinctures. All those things are going to be for sale. 100% of the proceeds are going to help support this initiative. I need your help because we have a lot of work to do starting in January and I can't do it with additional resources. So please share, please come. All these gifts are packed with love. And while you're doing it and you're supporting th these gifts, you're also making an impact. Thank you. I've waited almost 20 years for this day. 20 years to be heard, to be witnessed, to change a culture of abuse. I'm here to support age 1399 and 1547. My whole life since I was a child was geared towards community service and advocating, and I was even coined Dr. Doolittle as a child and published twice in the Patriot Ledger before the age of 13. I am now a mother, grandmother, domestic violence survivor, author of two books, and a member of the Mass Track Coalition, and I've been passionate about advocating for change since 2005. I can't tell you how long I have waited for these laws to be present. My story is not unique because what is happening in our courts to victims has become like a rabid infection that has reached pandemic levels needing a cure or a vaccine. I was taught it was the safest thing to leave my abuser who coined, who was coined rock, excuse me, Clark Rockefeller wannabe to protect my children. I got that restraining order, only to be threatened and bullied for doing so and using coercive tactics to force me to lift the restraining order for financial reasons because he withheld child support and put the house into foreclosure. I was checkmated where my abuser went to court and got ex parte custody 
by another judge by making up lies that defied all logic based on case history. For the next 18 plus years, I endured unrelenting, unstopped abuse by the way of family courts. He admitted in court, by the way, that he had no intention of ever complying with courts, with the court orders. And he also wanted my children to forget the entire maternal family even existed and told my four-year-old that I was just a surrogate and I was not her biological mother. I started saving for retirement at a very young age. I will never be able to retire due to my abuser cleaning up my entire retirement account and savings, preventing my ability to continue to save. I bought my first house at the age of 19. This year, my home would have been mortgage free, but he manipulated me to signing over the deed to my house when my daughter was diagnosed with a rare internal birth defect, saying if I didn't do that, I was such a horrible mother. Today, I still teeter on the homelessness as a result. I am healthy and always been healed quick from various things, but now I have chronic illness and an autoimmune condition that has rendered me partially disabled and a traumatic brain injury. There are studies that back up this showing up to $8 million and that it's cost to the taxpayer. But if the injuries like mine that are long-term, the costs are considerably higher. I once owned a successful business where I was within the top four of the company and was treated to with lavish trips to places like Hawaii and expenses all paid for. But because I hired, my, I hired and trained my abuser somehow, he undercut my contracts in the sense of, of selling, stealing my business underneath me. To this day, I have continued 18 years. My youngest is 19, going to be 20 next this month. And I'm still in litigation abuse. It doesn't end. He hasn't shown up to the last five hearings. and I've had to pay my lawyer $4,000 just because he didn't show up. It doesn't end. My abuser also begged the courts to soon incarcerate me to teach me a lesson. It doesn't end. What I'm asking you is to please change the culture. We need, we, it doesn't just end with me. It ends with our children's. It ends with the gun violence and everything else because it's all connected. And I thank you for your time. And I thank you for listening. I know it's late.